Here we go. Mac Lab presents Take Two Series Marker. Hey, Dylan. Hi, Luke. Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank that's you. That's good. That's good. Um, so, what exactly do you do with the Mag Lab? Uh, yeah, so I study neurodegenerative disease, like, uh, for example, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. A uh, prominent example of this is Stephen Hawking, which mm -hmm. you may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what exactly does the Mag Lab do to help your research? Right. So, I study how protein molecules, which basically perform everything that your body does, uh, naturally, how this goes wrong in disease. So in, in, in ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, they stick together in a particularly um, abnormal way. And I use the NMR instruments at the Magnet Lab to understand um, the three-dimensional shapes that they make when they stick together. Okay. Um, so in these three-dimensional shapes, are you looking for a certain pattern or um, certain angles that help you know whether this string or molecule is doing what it's supposed to do or not supposed to be doing? Right, so uh, you can think of a protein molecule as a, as a long string or a chemical polymer that thro folds up into a three-dimensional shape. Uh, in neurodegenerative disease, it folds up into the wrong three-dimensional shape. And mm -hmm. what I'm doing is measuring um, distances between different spots in this protein molecule to uh, be able to calculate a three-dimensional structure and compare that to uh, the normal state or the non-disease state of the protein. Okay, so in this structure, is there like voids or is it perfectly patterned so you know exactly what you're looking for? Um, it, it's, it's difficult to say because we don't really know what the structure is and, until, until just recently. And we also don't know what the, the functional or the normal state of the protein molecule mm. is. That's also a question. Um, but in, in disease, like in ALS, uh, the, the protein folds up into a particular shape that gets repeated many, many times. So you have like an even longer thread-like object. Um, and we know what that looks like. And by understanding that, we can figure out maybe new treatments for the disease. How close are you guys to a treatment? Um, I do very basic science. Okay. So my, my results are actually useful to medicinal chemists or clinical okay. scientists who would then design treatments uh, that you could actually use in animals and then maybe eventually in humans. Um, so we're still a long way off from probably a, a, a cure for the disease, but we understand a little bit more about it now. Awesome. Well, Dylan, that's our time. All right. It's great <laughs> talking with you. You Luke. too. MagLab presents Take Two Series Marker. Hi, Dylan. Welcome back to the Mag Lab. Uh, you. you did a lot of your graduate training here, so um, uh, that was obviously a, hopefully a good time for you. But you've been at the NIH for a while now, and you've been working on some very interesting uh, studies that involve neurodegeneration. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so I've been using uh, nuclear magnetic resonance methods to investigate the molecular structures of RNA binding proteins that aggregate in diseases like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So if you, there are a lot of diseases that actually um, express amyloids um, and, and involve aggregation, whether it's Parkinson's disease, um, ALS, as you mentioned, or Alzheimer's disease. What are the differences in aggregations between those different diseases? So what we found is uh, my postdoctoral work was to determine a molecular structure for an amyloid related to ALS. Uh, and what we found is that unlike the amyloids in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, they're held together by very hydrophilic interactions, which are much weaker than the greasy hydrophobic interactions that hold together uh, amyloids in Alzheimer's. So based on that type of interaction, do you think that you can actually look at um, therapeutics, either pharmaceuticals or whatnot, that actually interrupt those interactions? Certainly. Uh, there are a number of disease mutations that are linked to the um, ALS and, and non Alzheimer's dementia, and they tend to introduce a more greasy or hydrophobic core to these, these amyloids. And we think that medicinal chemists can design drug treatments to help disassemble these amyloids um, with this uh, molecular information that we provide. And in determining the conformational structure of the amyloids, uh, what does NMR provide for you in particular? So the, the high field instruments available at the Magnet Lab allow us to precisely measure interatomic distances. And we use this information to, de uh, to design a three-dimensional uh, model for how the, the, the molecule looks in the, in the amyloids. OK. And not every hammer is uh, suited for every nail. Are there any particular fields that work best for you in, in some of your work? Uh, yeah, so because of the underlying physics, um, lower magnetic fields actually facilitate certain measurements. Um, and those done, were done at, at the National Institutes of Health, where we have access to that instrumentation. So it's a combination of high field and low field, depending on, on what uh, quantity you want to measure experimentally. Excellent. Um, 
that noise says that we're basically uh, done for today. But if you'd like to learn more about uh, Dylan's work, um, please see this website.